Hello and welcome. This is the Semantic Endpoint Encryption 1101 Removable Media Encryption Overview. My name is Josh Wheeler and I am a systems engineer with Symantec. So what will we be going over in this demo? Well, first we're going to discuss why to encrypt. Well, first of all, it's the law. Um, different compliancy requirements, whether that's HIPAA, uh, Sarbanes-Oxley, uh, those uh, requirements require the data be encrypted, whether that be at rest, depending on the requirements, or in transit. The second is your data uh, that gets stolen. You know, the potential loss of intellectual property or trade secrets. And it's also your reputation. Uh, so we don't want to lose confidence with our shareholders or our customers if there is a potential uh, loss of data. So in the demo, uh, we're going to discuss what happens during encryption, how that processor, process works, uh, what are your recovery options when it comes to removable media encryption, and then what is the end user experience? What is the process of them encrypting data and accessing that encrypted data? And then also, what about reporting? We're going to go ahead and take a look at that. So here I have my endpoint encryption version 11 management console. I'm going to go ahead and go into encryption software setup, and we're going to select removable media encryption. Your options for removable media access encryption. The first option under access is do not allow access of files in removable media. So basically we're going to set uh, a block onto removable media and block any external uh, removable media devices. We can also set this to read only. This again will set those devices to, to read only. We won't be able to actually write any data to it. Now if we want to actually do the encryption, we'll select the third option, which is allowed read and write access to files on removable media. <clears throat> the encryption format, you're going to notice two different versions here. The first one is for endpoint encryption, removable media encryption, which is the current version of the product. The second option is removable storage, which is for the legacy version. So if you want to be backwards compatibility with the version 8.1 product or older, uh, you'll want to select the removable storage option. For this demo, we're going to go ahead and select the removable media encryption format. The next option is under automatic encryption. So a few options here. The first option is do not encrypt. So we're basically going to leave it up to the end user to decide whether or not they want to encrypt this data. The next option here, encrypt files per semantic data loss prevention. If you have our data loss prevention or our DLP product in place um, and you have the flex response plugin installed, we will actually wait for data loss prevention to decide <clears throat> whether or not these files are sensitive or violate any sort of policy compliancy requirements. Um, and then DLP will then hand those uh, sensitive files off to the encryption and encrypt those files. Anything that is not deemed sensitive, though, that does not have that insensitive data, will not be encrypted. The next option is encrypt new files. We're basically going to monitor external media, and we're going to encrypt those new files as they are copied to the external media. The last option here is just to allow the users to choose if they want to do encrypt all new files or to default to do not encrypt. We're going to just go ahead and select encrypt new files. The last option is here, on-demand encryption. This just allows the users to do right-click on the files uh, that are on the removable media and choose to encrypt or decrypt those files. Our next option is going to be the exclusions option. So here we can set some uh, different types of media exclusions, whether it's audio, video, image files. Uh, we can go ahead and exclude any of those types of devices there. Or, or file types. File types exclusion, we can do it by extension. So if we want to exclude maybe exe files, we can go ahead and exclude that. And then the next is device exclusion. So if we have a vendor ID, product ID uh, for those particular devices, we can set those exclusions for those. So next is encryption method. Now we can choose to encrypt with a password or certificate or even a combination of both. Uh, most common is probably going to be password 
end user is going to be able to select a, their the password that they're going to use to encrypt their data. If you do have a CA within the environment and want to generate certificates and distribute certificates, uh, we can use that as our encryption method also. <coughs> So default passwords, this is going to be the option here if you want to allow users to set a default password or session passwords or even device session passwords. Uh, so if uh, they're going to be encrypting uh, data to multiple devices or there's a particular session and they want to just kind of default on to different passwords uh, depending on those sessions, we can allow them to do that. Recovery certificate, this is the one recovery option when it comes to removable media uh, because end users, uh, especially if you're going to be using password settings, can choose whatever password they want to encrypt that. If the end user forgets what password they chose to encrypt that data or potentially say they leave the company, you need to have this recovery certificate in place. Uh, this is very similar as to implementing certificates for encryption. This is going to be, again, a CA within the environment generate the recovery certificate, import that here. Uh, then what this allows is no matter what the end user chooses as their password, you will have a recovery certificate in place. So if they do forget what password they chose, you can use the certificate to recover that data. This next option is portability. This is what we are able to, uh, this allows us to make the removable media portable. Uh, access utilities. There's a Windows and a Mac OS X version of the utility that we can choose to automatically copy to the external media. So every time you plug in external media, we will automatically copy uh, those access utilities to that media. We also have an option to allow users to create uh, self-encrypting archives. Uh, so this is going to be like a zip file where you put multiple documents in it, save and encrypt that data with a password. Our last option here is certificates, whether or not you want to allow users, if you're implementing certificates, to be able to encrypt or decrypt files with expired certificates. So that's the package creation software setup overview. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the end user experience is going to be. Uh, the first piece that we're going to take a look at is the actual management agent or the desktop agent. We'll take a look at the settings that the users have for removable media. So here you'll notice we have default passwords. They can kind of come in here and set their default password. I've already set mine here. They can come in and change that password too. Then if you have session passwords enabled, they can come in and enable a session password uh, for the particular session that they want to work with. We can also take a look at the certificates that have been issued to the system and what we're going to be using for encryption if we have certificates enabled. Uh, for the purposes of this particular demo, we're going to use password as our uh, encryption method. So that's the actual desktop agent there. Let's go ahead and encrypt some files. So here I've got my super secret information uh, file here. This has my super secret passcode. I want to make sure that I protect this data uh, if I'm going to uh, take this with me. So I'm going to go ahead and plug a USB drive into the system. And we'll take a look and see what that process looks like. Copy some data to it, encrypt it. Uh, and then we'll move that data to another system and access that data. So now I've mounted this drive. We should see it pop up. I have application device control for endpoint protection enabled. Uh, this little pop-up here is going to notify the user that the access utility has been copied to the drive. So this is the little notification letting them know that they've uh, received that utility. So let's go ahead and open my removal media disk. You see I have no files other than the access utilities that have been copied there. I'm just using Windows File Explorer to, to look at the data on the file. So here I'm going to go ahead and just drag and drop my file to my system and we'll notice that it gets encrypted automatically. So uh, your users as far as their process is going to be the same. They're just going to drag and drop or copy their files to the 
renewable media like they normally would. Um, indication that it is encrypted with the little lockbox icon. That is because we are on a system that does have the actual agent installed, so we can identify that the data is encrypted. Now if I go to access this, it's not going to prompt me to authenticate because I am on the system that did the encryption. I'm already authenticated to this system. So it's going to open up the file in plain text. So now let's go ahead and move that file to, or that thumb drive to a system that does not have encryption. And we'll take a look at what that's going to look like. Right, this is my uh, system with no encryption here. I plugged in my thumb drive. It's going to ask me to go ahead and open it. I'm going to see those same three files, but notice that the icon has changed here. It's because I don't have the active actual encryption there. If I go to open the file, though, we will notice that the file is unreadable. It is encrypted. There's no text in here uh, for me to glean any data off of that. So I will launch the Access Utility for Windows. And this will show me a list of the files on the system and which files are encrypted. Now this Access Utility is self-contained, so it does not require uh, it to be installed on, on the system itself. It just it needs to be launched from the renewable media. So here we can see my super secret information file is encrypted. It is the one encrypted file here. If we go ahead and double click this, it is now going to prompt me for the password. And it's also going to give me an option to save this as my default password. So if I have multiple files in there um, and they're all saved with the same password, I can use this. It's automatically going to use that same password to decrypt those files. So I'm going to go ahead, enter that password. It's now going to decrypt that file and now I have access to it. Now I can add more information and save that file. It's going to save it back to that original location as that encrypted file. Now if I do save as, it is going to save it as an unencrypted version uh, of that file to the desktop or whatever location I choose to save that. Uh, now if I do want to decrypt this file, uh, let's say I want to copy it to my desktop, I can now do decrypt the location. It is going to ask me where I want to drop that file and now I have a decrypted version of that file on my desktop. But now let's say I want to add more information. I'm going to go ahead and just create a new file here. Call test info, just put some random data inside of it here. Save that. So now I can actually use the access utility itself to do the encryption. So I can copy this file and it's now going to uh, encrypt that file with that default password that was set. And now that file is now protected. So that's the end user experience, the little overview of the actual media encryption itself. So let's go back to the management console and take a look here. If we need to change the settings, depending on how we're managing it, we can modify the native policy manager. Again, the removable media portion of it would be contained uh, in this. <clears throat> so we can go ahead and change that. If we're doing group policy management, uh, we'll simply go to our particular group that we want to modify this policy for. So here I've got my encryption client group and I'm gonna modify that particular GPO. And then again, all of those settings we just went through, we'll be able to come in and modify and change uh, those settings post-install. Also with reporting, if we want to take a look and do some reporting on this, we can run some reports uh, that are the removable media. 
uh, we can take a look at different devices, uh, removable media encryption, is it installed? Uh, that's probably the more common policy we'll want to take a look at. We'll be able to see which systems in my environment have the removable media piece installed. And then we can also come and run some custom reports uh, showing us uh, if the removable media portion is installed and then what format it's also running. So removable media versus removable storage. And that's the overview of semantic endpoint encryption version 1101, removable media encryption.